You have just tuned in to the Mag Nerd Podcast, your home for everything in music, anime, and gaming. What is up, guys? Shown off the King here, back with another video, and today I'm bringing you guys a new segment from the podcast. I'm calling this Mag Nerd News Brief. And essentially what I do is I take hot stories that just come right off the press and I bring it to you guys right away. I still will do my uh, core, you know, I'll still do the podcast at the end of the week on Fridays with my co-host Ghostman. But this is an opportunity for me to just bring you guys news as I see it. And again, it just has to be something that interests me within the music, anime, gaming, or in, in my case, toys. And this is going to be actually a toy story. Uh, no pun intended, but um, there's actually some great news coming out of KB Toys. It's actually just um, started running on CNN, so it's, it's actually official. And again, I'll leave a link in the description below to the actual CNN article. But essentially, KB Toy Store was a rival of Toys R Us uh, back in the day. So, like, for those who don't know, if you were a younger um, viewer, uh, there were three main giants in the toy in the toy game. Uh, Toys R Us always stood at the top. Uh, second place was always KB Toy Stores. And then at the bottom of that uh, was uh, Lionel Kitty City. Not a lot of people even remember Lionel Kitty City. It was kind of like a Lionel Kitty City turns your frown upside down. Like, that was their slogan. Anyway, so we all know that Toys R Us closed down a few months ago. And everyone was heartbroken, including myself. As you can see, I am a collector of... Uh, action figures, toys of that nature. It's kind of a, a thing that I've just recently gotten into more seriously. Um, I do I do tend to stick to the higher quality action figures. Um, but again, you know, I have two kids. I have a five-year-old, well, a soon-to-be five-year-old and a three-year-old. So for me, it, it hurt when Toys R Us closed because I would take my kids into the store on the weekends just to kind of pass time so they can take a look at what they're going to get for Christmas. Being able to go into a store and look at toys was very important. And it looks like the silver lining in Toys R Us closing down is, is that everybody's nostalgia bug is starting to just, you know, ramp up and starting to bite them a little bit. Because now we get this announcement that KB Toy Store is going to actually be uh, opening up pop-up locations during this holiday season. Now, um, again, I'm going to just, you know, go over some of the details of this actual opening. Uh, so essentially, is going to the goal is to have uh, about four to six hundred locations open during the holiday seasons, and the best way to think about it is if you guys are familiar with uh, Spirit of Halloween, that's kind of like that pop up uh, store location that uh, basically comes to uh, shopping malls and right right around that August, you know end of August, beginning of September time frame, and they basically just pop up at the uh, at the malls in any big location and just, you know, sell Halloween stuff. So the one that's in our location has already been opened up probably for about a week or so. Uh, we usually take our girls there to kind of figure out what they want to be for Halloween. We always go every year. It's a smart idea. Now, what KB is trying to do is they're trying to do that same exact thing, and they're trying to capitalize on the fact that Toys R Us has closed and they're trying to get in there now, which is very smart because actually um, doing some research, it looks like there are a lot of people that are in, um, invested in Toys R Us who are a part of that Toys R Us structure that's going to help KB Toy Store uh, bring it back into the marketplace. Now, it looks like from the article as well, we find out that um, essentially what's happening is, is that balls are being the one that are um, primarily helping to fund this project. And the reason is, is because places like Amazon and uh, even Target Online, like these places are taking money away from foot traffic. So usually when people were buying toys, you had to go to a mall, you had to go inside a store, you had to bring in, you had to pass the Auntie Anne's, you had to pass the Macy's. So what the mall is trying to do is they're trying to bring people back into the malls and bring that foot traffic back in so that they can basically just, you know, get more business. And I, for one, am okay with that. I'll be honest with you. I, there's nothing, like, let me be clear, there's nothing better than jumping on the Amazon, finding an item that I want, and just hitting the button and having it shipped to me, either free two-day shipping, or if I'm really, really anxious for a certain item, I can pay like a dollar fifty or something like that to have it shipped to me overnight for free. I mean, for damn near for free. So, 
I get the appeal of Amazon. That's not what I'm saying. But there's also a piece of that as well where I want even more instant gratification. I want to be able to just get up at 6 o'clock in the afternoon and be like, hey, I want to go to a toy store and see what they have. I want to be able to go through the aisles and just kind of see if there's anything there that's going to you know, spark my interest. And we don't get that anymore. And the reason why is because, quite honestly... The only other place that you can really buy toys now is either Kmart, Target, or Walmart. And I'll be honest with you, like, there's no place that I would least rather go than Walmart, especially for toys. Like, I don't know if you guys know, but Walmart is the absolute worst when it comes to toys. The worst. And Target... uh, Target has gotten a lot better. Um, they've actually expanded their toy sections a little bit more, and they have done a better job at keeping things uh, visually appealing as well as better stocked. Like going to a Walmart is almost like going to a third world country that doesn't have running water. Like it is ridiculous. Like I go, I I go grocery shopping every week for the family and. I have a habit of every time I get the groceries, the last thing I do is I swing past the Walmart toy section to see if they have anything new, anything that might um, spark my interest. Usually what I'll do is um, for a while there I was collecting the um, Fall of Cybertron, uh, uh, I'm sorry, Power of the Primes uh, Dinobots. That was kind of my thing for a while. I have uh, eventually gotten hold to all of the pieces, but for a while there I was looking at Walmart in order to get my hands on them. And... For the for the most part, I was able to get uh, most of them from um, from Walmart, um, except three of the major ones. But again, this is not a story about Transformers. But the reason why I mention it is is because I found it very frustrating every single week that I would go to a Walmart to try to find these action figures, and it was. It was horrible. The, the store looked wrecked. It always looked like it was never stocked. Like It literally looks like every day that you go into that store, someone has already come in there and just knocked everything off the shelves. It was always... I would always take a glimpse at the Marvel Legends figures and it would always be like all these empty shelves of just randomness and then it would be like two or three Marvel Legends figures that basically nobody ever wanted. And the, the, there's actually a funny story here. Like... I was able to get the power, I mean, the um, power of the prime is Grimlock a few months ago, and I finally was able to pick it up, and I was like, victory! And there was this one Grimlock that someone had crushed, and it was just sitting on a shelf, and I was like, well, they might as well just go ahead and reshop that, or just, you know, put it in the recycling, because no one's going to buy that. Three, four months later, that daggone action figure is still sitting on the shelf, just looking abused, and it's just like, what are you guys doing? Like, Walmart is the worst when it comes to stocking. Walmart is the worst for selection. It is just ridiculous. So for KB to come in, if they can come in and bring that quality experience that collectors like myself and kids can enjoy, they can knock it out of the park. I'm just I'm just saying cuz the best combination is something like that I'm bringing to the table where I'm a collector plus I have kids in that key demo that you want. I have a five I have a four year old, almost a five year old, and a three year old. So I have those kids who are just looking for these LOL dolls, these cabbage patch kids, Barbies, like all of that girly girly kid kid stuff. My girls are into that stuff. Plus I'm the big kid as well where I'm looking for Transformers, Power Rangers, uh I'm also looking for video games and uh, SH Figure Arts because there was a Toys R Us that closed down there where I live that actually had uh, high quality action figures at a display. They actually had a vendor that came in and put in a permanent display for SH Figure Arts, you know, Dragon Ball characters, things of that nature. And that brings me back to the KB Toy Store news. I do apologize. I kind of went off on a small tangent. So, like I said, it's going to be four to 600 stores. And if it actually goes well during the holiday season, their plan is to actually make make four to um three to four hundred permanent stores and that's going to be based off of success rate so if they go to new brunswick new jersey and they have a pop-up location and over the holiday season it sells gangbusters and everything goes well they're going to put a permanent store there so that's kind of how they're going to do and i think that's actually very smart because again i don't think it's a good idea to kind of just run through and just open up locations everywhere there was a toys r us because you're going to fall prey to people who are excited about it at first but then go back into the same habit of of not going to the toy store and not appreciating it like they um, they should have. Now, uh, one of the other things that they're going to do that's going to actually be very smart is they're going to have what's called uh, toy nerds. 
and I guess those those are their associates. Like I don't I don't know if it's gonna be everybody's gonna be called a toy nerd or they're gonna be select people. So what these toy nerds are gonna be, it's almost like the Geek Squad of toy stores. So these are gonna be people who are highly trained and um in uh in toys and collecting. So when you go and talk to these people, they'll always know what the hottest toys that are coming out. They'll always have an idea of what toys are gonna be the um, ones that you're gonna want to collect. So they're gonna basically uh cater themselves to the uh, toy collectors like myself as well as being able to let those clueless parents know hey this is what your kid might like so I don't know if it's going to be everybody that's in the store or is it just going to be that select person but I think that's a very smart idea they're going to also with the bigger locations like they're the, the, the bigger Toys R Us locations they're going to also open up cafes they're going to have um, demos they're going to basically turn it into a toy experience which is absolutely incredible there for the longest time these toy stores were not ready to evolve until it was too late and that was the issue with toys r us toys r us focused too much on trying to be that old school hey brick and mortar you got to come in to see the toys they weren't ready to evolve with the times yes it's very important to off like right now they're going to also have with the kb toys they're going to also have uh, online shipping as well so you can order it online and pick it up in the store now as long as they can do this as well as amazon and y'all got to also be able to do if you're going to do the online thing, you got to offer like free shipping, like two day shipping, like it's a must. Anything that you want to order right now. Now, one of the other things that they're, um, that they were also saying is I'm just, you know, pulling up my notes here is uh, they're going to have meet and greets, Q and A's with toys, um, with, with uh, toy makers and developers. Like it's going to be an entire experience. And I, again, like I tell this story sometimes and I, I used to work for, uh, Blockbuster. Uh, Blockbuster had an opportunity early on to purchase Netflix, and they actually turned it down. Now, it ended up being the biggest mistake of their entire lives. Not buying Netflix when Netflix went to Blockbuster and was like, hey, you want to buy us out? And they basically said, no, we don't, we don't want you. And pretty soon after that, Netflix got big, and then, of course, Best Buy went back. To, I mean, not Best Buy, but Blockbuster went back to them like, hey, we want to buy you. And they are like, nah. Nah, we're good. And then shortly after that, then once the uh, streaming service started and um, the DVD on demand, the DVD rental, like, you know, with uh, Netflix started popping off, then all of a sudden Blockbuster tried to jump onto the bandwagon at the towards the end. But by then it was too late. It was like, you know, everybody already had a chip on their shoulder for Blockbuster anyway. You know, late fees and things of that nature. Never having that movie that you want to watch in stock. It had always been a problem. Trust me, I know. I worked there. Now... One of the other things that I used to always complain to my manager about was the game section. Like, I used to always say to him, I'm like, why why do you guys have such crappy stock in video games? Like, they never had any of the newest video games that when they came out. And it was even worse sometimes because they actually had a stock room where they would have some of the newer games and they wouldn't put them out. And I was, I, I, like, it, it, it. It made no sense. I was sitting here like, I, like I, I never forget, like Madden had came out one year, and they had copies of Madden in the back, and then they would not put them out on the shelf. And I'm just like, you know, um, why aren't you guys putting this out there for people to rent? And it was just always like some sort of corporate initiative where you would have like a sticker date. It, it was, it was ridiculous. But anyway, so again. Bottom line, I'm, I'm going to try to wrap this up because I don't want to make this too long. The, the the process is here just to try to make this more of a um, 10 to 15 minute segments for you guys. Is Again, KB Toy Stores is coming back this holiday. Uh, it's going to be right up front, four to 600 locations opening up during the holiday season. If it does well, they're trying to do between three to 400 permanent locations. And in those locations, they're going to have dedicated toy consultants that's going to basically be uh, be able to just help you with collecting and just help you find the right stuff. They're going to also have interactive experiences, like I said, Q&As. They're going to also have uh, toy signings. They're going to have um, other people coming in just to demo toys, like have your kids come in. They're basically even doing like um, kind of like Barnes & Noble where they have like a coffee shop, like Wi-Fi. Like it's, they're, they're trying to create an experience to bring people back into the brick and mortar malls. And I, again, I am so excited about this. Like, I can tell you from the in, from the news that I hear right now. Oh, I almost forgot one other big thing. 
they're also looking to do party rooms. So, hey, if you want to bring your kids and have a birthday party at a, toy, at a KB Toys, you can do that as well. You can have some cake. You can have kids go out and play with the toys. Like, to me, like, that's the kind of innovative stuff that we needed to see from Toys R Us before they got shut down. But, again, let me know what you guys think. Comment in the section below. Uh, if you pre if you like the video, thumbs up the video. Cl subscribe to the channel. Hit bell notifications so that when I do come out with these quick news briefs, you guys will be the first to know about it because you'll get that little bing right on your phone and you'll be all set. Uh, this is Sean of the King. Have a great day, guys.